Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nova Empire. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, but I've uh, been busy in real life and on the game. My entire alliance got uh, kind of bullied out of their spot. They're, they're gone now. Um, I did what I had to do to keep everybody safe, and if it's better for the entire galaxy that we're in, you know, it's a good thing. But it is frustrating because I was in charge of one, and anyway... The top two alliances both decided they were going to completely wipe us out if we didn't join them instead. And well, we probably could have put up a good fight. I didn't think we would have won against either one of them, unless both. Um, you know, we were in fifth place, so against the top two, lots of whales. We had a lot of weak guys. So I was just like, fine, we'll just join them then. Um, anyway, I'm going to talk about two main topics uh, besides that update today, uh, and that is how to get gold admirals and fleet modifications, a little bit about the ships. Uh, I've sort of redeveloped, uh, I've learned new things about the game, and my ideas about the weapons and armor have changed slightly. Mostly it's still the same. I mean, everything I said before was accurate, except for probably a little bit about the missiles. They are a little better than I expected. But also I know a lot more about the uh, special ships that you can get and in-game stuff. That you could get with a regular galaxy. I'm not yet in the elite galaxy. Um, I have managed to get my station up to level 6 as you can see here. I'm still trying to work to build the dreadnoughts. But I've done research on the dreadnoughts. So cat hair everywhere. There's my kitty. Say hi kitty. Anyway. Um, well let's go ahead and get into it. First things first. What I bet most people want to know. How to get gold admirals. Now you probably know how to get a gold admiral. But you don't know necessarily the best way. Or I've seen a lot of people with misconceptions about the gold admirals. And they're like. How come my friend keeps getting a gold admiral every month. And I can't get one at all. After several months and spending tons of money. Um, or saving up a whole bunch of these you know, tokens or whatever to get them. And I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick my admirals. Boom. And I've not spent that much money on this game. I've spent a little. Uh, but I mean, as you can see, I ease, I've i already got a bunch of gold admirals. Um, I'm working on leveling them up. <clears throat> and the secret behind it, there's a few things. And some of this is potentially rumor and some things that I've learned. Uh, let's start with... Um, so when you're going to go for a gold admiral, you want to save up your GEC and go for it all at once. Uh, every time you spend Gek, and I need to emphasize this, and go spend Gek to go for uh, admirals, it increases your chances of getting an admiral. There's uh, also this building here. Uh, do, 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 I think it's... Oh, that's a shipyard. Prison. Nope, level three. Okay, I'm in the wrong level. Naval Academy. The higher level this is, supposedly the better your chances of getting better admirals, purple and gold, or with better abilities. So I believe that is true, but I do not know for certain. Um, but yeah, focusing on upgrading this will help. I'm trying to get it upgraded to a, one more level, which I think is the max, but uh, not there yet. And I still have several gold admirals, so you know my tricks are working. Um, another thing is wait for server maintenance. And again, this is something I've not been able to Garen, you know, this is not an absolute thing. This is more of a rumor, but it appears to be true. After server maintenance, uh, the odds of getting the gold admirals seems to be a little bit higher immediately after. So as soon as server maintenance is over, if you're going to make an attempt, do it. Or if you've saved up enough to make an attempt, wait for that server maintenance. It happens, then go for it, your gold admiral. Um, and when I say save up for it, I mean save up Gek for it. Now, here is a misconception that a lot of people have. So many people screw over their chances to get a bunch of admirals because they're not using something correctly, a single item. And that is, when you go to refresh, if you look down here at the bottom, it says instant refresh, and you've got those directives. I've got 21 of them right now. That is like a free refresh. Those free refreshes do not increase your chances of getting a gold admiral. They do still have a chance of giving you gold admirals. I'm not saying they don't. But your odds of getting one does not go up when you use them. If you save up, I've seen people save up up to 600 
of those things and then blow them all at once trying to increase their odds of getting gold admirals, it doesn't increase. You have the base chances. If you get those, your chances are best to you know spend your gek first and then get them. But since you can't do it that way, usually, unless you're going to spend money on those, um, it's they're definitely worth using after you've run out of gek or after you've used all your gek to try to get admirals. If you are going to buy some, buy them then. Uh, otherwise, don't bother with them. Don't buy them. You know, uh, if you do need a few for something, though, this is the best way to use these items. When you go into, oh, I'm going to hit the wrong button there, space station. There we go. There are good ways of using these items, but you want to use them every day for your daily bonus. There is Inspector Recruits. This is here every single day. And you get one refresh for free. And if you use, say, four of those items every day to get all three of these bonuses, first off, you're going to get 110 gek. Also, if that gives you enough stuff to get up to here, you get two of them back. So you use four, you get two. Essentially, you've just used two for 110 gek. And 100 gek is enough for a refresh. And with people... Um, so using like up to 600 of these that they've saved up, if they had used that four at a time to get, you know, they literally could have got thousands of gek. And I don't mean like 1,000 or 2,000. I mean like 20,000 gek. For, for 6,000 of those things, if 6,000 would have got them an extra 3,000 because they would have got half of it back, that's 9,000. Um, and 9,000 giving them... For every four, uh, a hundred gek. I mean, four is a hundred, so forty would be a thousand. So four hundred would be ten thousand. Four thousand would be a hundred thousand. Wait, I'm, I think I'm off. But it, point being, though, it it would probably be something like twenty thousand gek or forty thousand gek, something like that. Um, yeah, I think about 20,000 gek, give or take. Anyway, <clears throat> but still, being able to say, hey, look, I just got 20,000 extra gek. It's not all at once. It's only like 100 at a time. Um, and not to mention, like, if you wouldn't have got this before, not that one, uh, the one before it, if you would have been a little short of this, it's another 100 gek. You know, so it will help you get those things. It's giving you gek, and it will help you get chests that can give you other gek and other items. So it's useful for that. Um, and since you're getting the base chance anyway, that's the time to do it. That's the best way to use those items. Use a few each day. And even then, you're going to get, between getting, you know, free ones from promos uh, and other things that you might get from here, there from, you know, challenges or whatever, or events you're going to have more than enough to keep doing that and have a bunch left over. Um, but anyway, listen, you, you'll drain them out. You'll be able to get a few back. It's, it's not a big deal. The, uh, that is the best way to use them, though. Not for increasing your chances, but for getting the geck to spend later, which can increase your chances. Um, now, I've already mentioned to upgrade the building. I already mentioned wait for maintenance. I already mentioned that those don't count for increasing your chances. That's, that's the number one mistake that people make. Um, the only thing that matters is your GEC and that maintenance time, really, in the building. Try to hold off to get your building upgraded at least to where mine is to level 5 before you spend your GEC. Just save up all your GEC until then. Uh, and even then, you probably might want to hold off if you're going to spend a whole lot of GEC till later. Uh, and when I say Gek, I mean Gek you get for free. You know, you might buy a little something. I, I got the monthly card, the uh, lifetime membership, where I get like 200 Gek a day. You know, it adds up. Um, and I heard somebody say, wait till you have about five to 15,000 Gek. You can probably get one with 5,000 Gek, but if you wait till you have 15, then you've got a little extra buffer room. And you get that reset, then you spend all that gek on refreshes because every time you refresh it your odds of finding a purple or an orange go up um and you will find a whole bunch of purples and you should your chances of getting an orange are really high with 5,000 again it's almost guaranteed with 15,000 you got that buffer and a lot of people will wait till they find one and they will stop that is a good way to go if you only want to spend about five to 15,000 gek 
Find one, stop, great way to go. Uh, however, that's not the best way to go. And that's not the way that I got the five that I have. Actually, that's the way I got one of the five that I have. I spent like four or 5,000, yeah, stopped. I wanted to see how crazy I can get with it. So I saved up a ridiculous amount of gek. I went above and beyond, and I even spent a little bit of money. Um, and I had fifty, just over 50,000 gek saved up. I was right at 50,000. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do this. And I went ahead and I waited a little longer for the, the whole server maintenance thing. When I did it, I discovered something amazing. By the time you spit 50,000 gek, literally, on average, every other one that I did was a purple or a gold character. I was passing up gold characters. I was like, yeah, I don't like that gold. Yeah, I don't like that gold. Ooh, that's a good gold. Uh, purple, gold, purple, purple, gold. It was almost every, not every time, it was every other time with 50,000 gek being spent. So if you can save up just a little bit more than that 15,000 instead of getting one, if you save up to that 30, that 50, and again, my thing's not even fully upgraded yet. If mine was fully upgraded, I probably would have a better chance of be able to use even less GEC or find even better versions. Um, but the point is, if you can manage to save up that kind of GEC, I know that's a lot of GEC to blow, and you're probably going to spend, you might find one purple after you've spent like five to 15,000, or not one purple, sorry, one gold. And then you spend maybe another, you know, five to fifteen thousand. You find another two, but at this point, potentially, you could have already spent forty-five thousand at most, and you've found what two or three. Um, but after that, oh my God! Just every, you know, you, you start seeing them every two thousand, or then one thousand, every couple hundred, um, and it's ridiculous. Like I said, I, I started seeing that pattern as I was running out of GEC. So 50,000 is like the key minimum to make almost every other hit a purple or gold hero. Like, I am I probably found three or four purples for each one gold that I found. So I wasn't finding a gold every other hit. Let me be clear about that. I, that probably came out wrong if you were thinking that originally. But I was finding uh, at least a purple every other hit, if not each hit. Uh, toward, at the very end, every hit was like purple, purple, nothing, purple, 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 gold, purple, purple, nothing, purple. It was, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, I found one of my golds earlier on by doing the whole minimum thing, the get one and stop. And I found, I probably found with a little over 50,000, I want to say six more golds, if not seven more golds by doing it that way. Um... And so many purples. I didn't even bother with the purples. I'm like, I'm caring. I bypassed some goals because I'm like, that one's not that good. That one's not that great. I was hoping to find a nice defensive one. Uh, I didn't, sadly. My evasive one, which is the first one I found, is the only real defensive one I've got. But I found five really good offensive ones that I did purchase. So, yeah, I, like I said, I've got a slew of golds. Like I, I bypassed several. Most people are like I would I need a gold admiral and or they've got like one gold admiral admiral. And I'm sitting here like I've got a whole fleet of gold admirals. One of them I've not even upgraded yet. He's still a level zero, but yeah, I've got like another four or five that I've already got between levels of thirty and forty seven. Forty seven was that first one I found. Um, but that is how you get the gold admirals, and those are the ones that can have. The, they're much stronger than purple. They make purple obsolete. And that's because they can have so many more troops. It's going to increase your overall defense capabilities. They can naturally increase their natural overall defense and offenses better by like, what, 20% each or something like that uh, when they're fully upgraded. Um, and then, of course, because you have more troops, you also have more offensive capabilities. If you got, you know, 25% more troops with 20% more offense, you're actually looking at about 50% more power than a purple. So if you've got a purple that's sitting down with, you know, 600,000, if you have that thing as a gold and you have the extra troops to put in it of equal, you know, strength, you'd easily, easily 
be looking at over 900,000 power versus 600,000. Um, just because it's a gold admiral versus a purple, you know, and you could really easily, instead of hitting that, oh, I'm fighting to get to 700,000, you could be like, oh, I'm easily, you know, I'm at a million, <clears throat> over a million, you know, um, and that, that's how a lot of those people do it is those gold troops be able to say, hey, look, I've got three, four fleets, five fleets over a million power or the potential if, you know, you had enough Kraken troops to go over a million power or whatever the elite troops you're building are. Um, that's that's in-game stuff, I think, right there. I'm loving that. But anyway, moving away from Admirals, we're going to get into ship designs and talks. Now, I went over a lot of stuff before, so I'm not going to go over everything. But... Uh, gunships, as I mentioned, they're good for a fast group, and they're good for fillers. I, I have definitely s decided to keep about 10 gunships in my army just to fill in that one point. Like, if I am putting my troops in, I've got one point left. I can't put a frigate in there. Put a gunship in there. You know, just one gunship in that fleet to fill in that empty one spot, you know? Um, <clears throat> also, I've altered my weapon. Now, early game... Beams are really good. Lasers and beams, very good for taking on all those little ships. And, you know, putting them on your little ships to fight little ships are really good. But I'm moving into the late game. I don't care about those gunships. I don't care about those frigates. When I go in with my huge armies, I'm going to wipe the floor with any army that has those in it. All those are just going to be gone in a turn or two, you know, of shooting. Um, so what I need is weapons usually for other things. I've actually... Beams are just the one horrible weapon to use where I'm at right now. They were great in the beginning. They were the go-to weapon uh, that I should have gone for when I was going for missiles. But now where I'm at, I don't want beams. Beams are just useless. They, they do, against the heavy big ships, the only thing that's a real threat to me, they do 1% damage. 1%. That's useless. I'm sorry. Any other weapon does 10 to 20% against those things. And those are what the threats are. So... Yeah, beams are, are no longer that great for me. Um, so on my gunships, I actually go for the missiles now. Uh, and I've got the elite gunship design. And let me go ahead and show you. This is actually the one I'm using right now. Um, with little ships, you still want to go for shields defensively for components. They're better because of, again, what they have on them uh, to defend them. They're, they're weak against beams. Beams are not good against shields. Shields, you know, protect against the beams, though. Anything that is not a beam is already doing less damage anyway. Shields are the way to go on little ships. Uh, but I've switched over to missiles on my gunship. And the reason why I've done this is three reasons. First off, if my gunship's only going to live for the beginning part of the battle, my opponent probably still has his shields. Being able to bypass those shields or do extra damage is going to essentially increase my DPR by 50% right there. Um... Secondly, you know, I've got the good accuracy, to, so I don't have to worry about missing like cannons. Uh, but also, it is a burst damage weapon. And what that means is, if I'm only going to get one shot and this thing's going to get killed the first volley, at least I did three turns worth of damage instead of only one. So I literally triple my damage, or, you know, maybe even add it, even if, it, if my ship would have died, lived two turns and then died on the third, I would still increase my damage by 30 three percent so i could either increase my damage by 33 percent or i could triple my damage if it dies on the first turn or if it dies on the third turn it's still the same damage i didn't lose anything potentially i think missiles are a little better than i thought and again this is this is only a thought this has not been proven or tested yet but depending on how armor works if armor works on a percentage this doesn't make a difference but if armor works on a point basis for each shot if I'm only shooting once versus shooting three times, technically I'm reducing that armor by up to two-thirds. Um, which means I'm actually bypassing shields and a lot of his armor. Making missiles a lot better than they originally look. My base damage is still a little bit lower, but if I'm doing the burst damage, potentially bypassing a bunch of armor, and I'm doing extra damage because of the whole... It penetrates 50% of shields. This is definitely the way to go weapon-wise. The only other uh, option... Uh, would be, because cannons, you got the whole problem if they've got evasiveness, they're not great against little ships, you know, they're not doing the burst damage, 
Uh, same with the, a lot, not the same, but a lot of stuff similar with the probes. They're the little machines. Uh, dang it, I can't think of the name of those things now. Robots, the robotics. Um, and as you can see, I've got uh, the green weapons too now. I still need some more to unlock, but let's go ahead and back out of that. Move this down a little more. So, gunships, good for a filler. I've decided missiles are useful on them. Um, missiles are still not necessarily the best weapon. Don't get me wrong. Just because it's great for a gunship that's going to die early on, if not in one volley, does not mean that it's good for your whole army. And you're going to get a lot of missiles on your Kraken ships anyway. So, I mean, you will have missiles, but... And a lot of it also depends on your admiral. If I've got one admiral for missiles. Yeah, I want missiles on all my ships for that admiral. But that's only because he buffs them, or she buffs them anyway. Now, frigates, this is still a great defensive army. This is, again, a bread and butter, early game defensive army, and later in the game, just to spend materials to, you know, need to either rebuild it or to uh, repair it. Still great for that. And honestly, it's not that much slower than a frigate, or a gunship. So if I want a fast army, I don't actually build a gunship army, I build my, I use my frigate army. One cheap army... That's got the speed, you know, like I said, slightly slower than a gunship army. But, I mean, it's going to do so much more better. A gunship army would just get annihilated right away. Completely useless defensively. The only advantage it would have is that speed. And you can get practically the same speed from the frigates. So, where I said the gunship army had a use before, it still has that use. But I use the frigate army in place of that. Uh, destroyers. I've got an upgraded destroyer here. I don't really care... These are useful early on when you can't even build the light cruisers. But after that, they're not really great for anything but, and I've said this before, a filler spot. Being able to throw in, you know, build maybe four or five of these. And if you've got only four points left in an army, instead of throwing in two frigates, you could throw in one of these and it might be better. Barely. You know, um, you don't need a whole bunch of these. And honestly... I'm not even building them right now. I'm just using two frigates. But if I had built a few, I, it would be better power-wise than using two frigates, you know. Uh, anyway. not Again, it's a filler spot. Fighters are fillers. Destroyers are fillers. Frigates are your early on defensive group. Um, another good defensive ship... Uh, probably for later on, because not using alloy still, but you've moved on from the minerals and crystals. Very decent ship for fighting, so this could be more of an all-purpose, you know, slightly faster. If you're not using, if you move away from using the frigates for only materials, if you got plenty of crystals, you can pull out the light cruisers. Make that your defensive army. Um, it would be much more capable, much stronger than an army of just frigates. Yes, it's costing you the crystals as well, uh, but you wouldn't be losing as much, and you've got a lot more firepower for your total set of armies. Um, and with its speed still being faster than what your main armies will be, which I'll get to in a bit, uh, it would be great to use these for that slight speed increase. So you can do a group attack, and they get there right before everything else. Um, not that that's the best way to go, but anyway, these are great. I love these. Like I said, I, I love the frigates for your early game material only, for your crystal and material only. I love these things. Um, and I've got I've got one full army of frigates for my cheap army, one full army of light cruisers. Those are my two defensive armies right now. Later, when I've unlocked the, the next, the one unit I can't build yet, um, I will make a defensive army probably of them, and I might eventually, when I have the resources, get rid of the frigates. Uh, but I... Still going to be using the frigates for a long time, I'm sure. Battle cruisers, right now they're my main offensive unit. That's the strongest unit I can make. But I believe once I get the Royal Oaks, I will replace my battle cruisers entirely with them. And this, much like the destroyer and the fighter, will become more of a uh, filler spot. You know, if I don't have quite enough points for another Royal Oak, I might throw in a single battle cruiser. So again, I might have a couple of them built. Um, also if I get the upgraded version of them offensively, it might be better than the, uh, Royal Oak or Crown or whatever, uh, it's non-upgraded version. So until I have that, I might actually build battle cruisers for my offensive power 
And then once I unlock that, or, you know, and better weapons and whatever, then I start to rebuild, you know, use them as fodder, get them killed, whatever, but then, you know, replace them with that better ship when I have it. Now, I believe the Dreadnoughts, as long as you have the resources, they are the best army, the fully upgraded ones, mind you. Yes, the battle cruisers again, upgraded versus the non-upgraded dreadnoughts, you get more firepower. So I can build battle cruisers to get more firepower, but the dreadnoughts have more defensive power. Once I get the upgraded dreadnoughts, it's honestly, I think, about the same firepower, but you you save a few command points, which means you can get more ships and a little bit more firepower out of the whole army. Um, but defensively, they're way better. But they're a little slower. Um, defense shouldn't even really matter if you're building your offensive fleets. That being said, since they're both defensive and equally offensive, um, Dreadnoughts are going to be the way to go for almost all your armies. You want full army of the stuff that you can build. Full army of Dreadnoughts for your offensive armies, one for each of them. Full army of Dreadnoughts if you could afford it for your defensive armies. And then you'd end up with one or two defensive armies of either frigates or light cruisers for your cheaper armies. And you're using battle cruisers, destroyers, and gunships as just to fill in the, the points. You know, what you can't afford. Oh, I can't afford another Royal Oak? Throw a battle cruiser on there. It's 12 points versus 24. Um... Say, let's say I had 20 points left. I can't put it on a 24-pointer. All right, I put it on a 12-pointer. It leaves me with 8 points, and then I can throw in, like, two destroyers, you know, which are 4 points each, something like that, or a light cruiser and a gunship. You want to fill in all those points to max out that army's firepower and potential. Um, but, yeah, that's what, out of what you can build. Now, all of the stuff that you can build, though, all of that is a sacrificial lamb, essentially. That's not going to be your ultimate stuff. You're going to use those armies as defense, as buffers. You know, they can all die. What you want to get with those armies, and let me get into my fleets right now, Duck. is the Kraken ships. Now... No, I call this fodder because I've been leveling up with fodder, but I switched over to the Kraken ships just to show you this real quick. You've got your Kraken Tormentors that you can build and your Kraken light cruisers, and this is the biggest one that you'll be able to get normally, uh, and that's your Ruiner Battle Cruiser. This thing is amazing. I love it. Um... But it's not exactly, like I said, you have to get it from fighting those elite crack arc fleets or from doing the Kraken when it shows up. Uh, now, when you have the Galaxy Kraken, where you're fighting other galaxies, um, you can get different kinds of Kraken ships that are actually even more powerful. Like, instead of this Rupture-like cruiser, which has attack of 1,300... I've got the Poseidon Light Cruiser, which is an attack of 1,800. That's almost a third stronger. Not quite, but that can add up real fast. So being able to build the more proficient uh, Kraken ships, and like the Destroyer version is the Hyperion Destroyer, um, you can definitely get a much stronger army. These are your ultimate ships that you can build in a regular galaxy. In Elite Galaxies, apparently there are some even other ships that you can get using rare materials, which are very hard to come by. I don't know about them yet. But I I'm hoping that's the next step up from the Kraken and not something in between the, you know, Krakens. What I want is, you know, a fleet of stuff like these uh, poseidon light cruisers or the version of the Ruiner of it that they have, which I believe is... I can't actually build this yet. I've got some plans for it. That's what it was. Let me check my items. Here. Crack three times Kraken Warden builds. Those Kraken Wardens are, you know, just... They they look like the Royal Oak version of the Kraken, I think. And that's the ultimate ship that I've currently seen. Um, and I can't even build it yet. But, you know, I'm getting close. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I think you could get more of those from the uh, intergalactic Kraken that well, everyone does. 
but you can't build those normally. You need the plans for them. And you can't control what their weapons are. It's a nice variety, I believe. I'd have to go back and look. Um, it's actually the next type of testing I plan on doing is writing down all the weapons for each of the different Kraken vehicles uh, and then seeing what they are and which of my admirals the different types would go best in, potentially, if there even is. If they're all, you know, equal variety or... There might be one that, say, doesn't use drones. I won't want it with my drone guy then, obviously. There might be one type that doesn't use cannons or lasers. I wouldn't want them with my cannon or laser hero. Um, but I'm going to go back over and show you real quick my dock so you can see the heroes I currently have equipped. I've got my evasive guy right here. Let me move this down. And he's actually my highest level because he's, he's been tanking almost everything. Um, and he's using my basic frigates that's that's all he's really doing and he doesn't have that much power only because the only thing he's got equipped is frigates if i wanted to put the stuff from you know my kraken ships on him i'd probably get a million power out of him um but moving over i've got here's another gold character this one's the one i've got with missiles so it's for anti-bases uh i obviously have a laser character over there this is my balanced uh drone version. I'm still trying to upgrade. He's one of my weaker ones still. And a lot of these you, you see are about 200,000 uh, each. Um, that's just where I'm at because there's, there's, I'm still leveling them up. Leveling them up, trying to get better ships, uh, and I've got a nice variety. Like Evasive is going to be my weakest. Balance would be my next strongest eventually once he levels up more. Um, and then my super, my lasers, and my cannons will be my other three. So I've got, you know, the base character with missiles, a cannon character. My fodder is sort of all-purpose with the Krakens currently, although I think that's my char Yeah, that's my cannon character right now I'm leveling up on. Um, yeah, that I think covers the ships. Uh, oh, yeah. Armor and weapons. I said there were some changes. Uh... I already covered everything, I think, with the lasers. Lasers, I thought, would be good just for early game stuff, even later in the game. They are not. They're good early game, but when you get into the late game and you have enough firepower to wipe out an entire army of those frigates or an entire army of that stuff right in, like, one, two shots, it doesn't matter if you have lasers. It doesn't. So they're useless. Plus, if you try to use them against the heavy ships, they do 1% damage, even if they bypass armor. Even if you have the special ones that have a 100% chance of bypassing armor, and they bypass it 100% of the time, which is only a 15% chance, you're still only doing 1% base damage. You know, uh, where with the other weapons, you're probably doing 10%. Yes, it might be reduced by 50%, but 5% of the 10, you know, 5% is still five times greater than one percent so lasers are amazing in the beginning of the game absolutely useless later in the game uh the robotics are still very well balanced all throughout from beginning to end but they're not the best at any point they're not the worst they're not the best it's a nice balance um that leaves you with cannons and missiles and missiles are a little better than I thought originally, I think, because of their burst damage, uh, which they already bypass shields. If the burst damage actually allows them to ignore two-thirds of the armor that they would normally have to deal with, they're going to get shields and armor, so even though they do less base damage because they're ignoring a lot of defenses, uh, unless you're putting a lot of plates on your army, I don't mean like armor plates, I mean like the health plates, um... Missiles are going to be the way to go. Uh, health plates will be your main counter for missiles if they're already ignoring armor and shields. Um, and they're accurate too. And they're the only weapon that you can increase the accuracy in even more above that 130% for a specific weapon type. Uh, I mean, I know you can increase all your accuracy. But also you can increase missiles accuracy even further. I don't know by how much, but assuming it was say 20%. Because uh, there's 20 levels in the upgrade for it. Actually, maybe I can look. Research. Ships. 
Uh, that's missile damage. Thunder Void. Here it is. Missile Accuracy. At level 2, I'm getting plus 2 to the chemical weapons. So each level is a level up. It's got 20 levels. So yeah, it'd be 20% more. So you'd have 150% base for missiles, essentially. There's nothing else over here for any weapon. That's the only weapon that gets upgraded with its accuracy further than its base amount besides upgrading all your fleet's accuracy. There is some stuff you can do to upgrade your entire fleet's accuracy, but that's the only thing for a specific weapon type to go even further beyond. Um, anyway, so yeah, missiles being more accurate, if you're fighting an evasive army, they could do really good. If you're fighting an army with a whole lot of armor, they reduce it by a third, to a third. If, again, because I haven't been able to test that for sure, uh, they're going to be really good. And if you're fighting something with a lot of shields, they already bypass 50% of that. They're already really good. Health plates are your counter for missiles. Didn't know that. Uh, learn something new every day. So that was a small correction I had to make. Um, and again, even though their base damage is lower, they're not as bad as I had thought. Because if you're missing... Even just 10%, you know, that's going to lower your overall damage from your army about 10%. So, having a base damage lower of 10%, that balances out the scales, meaning it has almost no weakness. I don't know. And that burst damage just makes it better on its own right there. Um, so, missiles are definitely a little bit better than I initially thought. They they don't seem like they're good to get ships at all. But... The worst weapon might not be as bad as I thought. I'm using it in one of my armies. You're already going to have a few of them in your Kraken fleet anyway, because you can't control what weapons are on there without taking off good ones and replacing them with weaker ones. Um, and I'm using it on my low fighters now, that's all. But moving away from missiles, cannons are still the best way to go against the higher level ships, like the Ruiners and the Royal Oaks. Damage-wise... But they don't have that accuracy. If they go heavy on evasion, cannons are not going to do very good. In which case, you're going to want those robotics. But if you go for robotics and they go, say, heavy on the armor... It, yeah, or... That's another thing. When you're talking about components, what do I want to wear on my ships? And... You want to wear on the... Uh, Royal Oaks, the big defensive ones. I've done my research on this. Either armor or evasion. And I bet you're asking me why. Why not shields? Why not plates? First off, it already has so much health. Adding plates on it, it's not going to make a huge difference health-wise. But because it has so much health, the armor reduces the damage for each shot. So the more health you have, the better each point of armor is. Putting a whole bunch of armor on it because of its massive health is way better than putting extra health on it. Amazingly better. So if you're not looking at a powered defense and you have a choice between health and armor, armor almost all the way. At some point, because of diminishing returns, it might be worth it to put a single point of health. I haven't been able to do the math on that since I don't have them yet. But at least, I would say, 80 to 90%, if not 100% of the way, armor would be better than health. Because you already have so much health that armor's being affected again and again and again and again. I mean, at least the first point of armor minimum is probably 10 to 100 times better than your first point of health. Um, but yeah, if he's using uh, cannons or drones... He's going to ignore half of your armor. Now, moving over from that, though, the only powered options are going to be your shields or your disruptor, your evasion. Shields are going to get beams. Beams only do 1% damage. You're not afraid of beams. Beams can do 100% of their 1% damage. It's not going to affect you. So, yeah, they ignore armor, but you don't have to worry about shields. So, and you already have sub shields, but the beams are already weak. If they get through your shields, they're doing 100% damage to you. It's still so weak, and you have so much health. It's not a worry. 
Um, so since you don't need shields for that, and the cannons and the drones and the missiles all bypass shields. You're going to increase his damage with shields, making your shields a lot weaker. Plus, you need power for those. You know, so shields are not worth it. Health is better than shields with the dreadnoughts, but I would heavily go on the armor. Now, evasion, however, evasion is good. Why is evasion good, but shields are not? Well, because, like I said, beams are already not a worry. If you go for armor, you're doing that to try to deal a little bit with cannons, drones, and potentially missiles. If you go for evasion... That's all to deal with the cannons, and it might a little bit help with the drones and the missiles. Probably the missiles the least. Um, and the reason I say this is cannons do the most damage out of all of the weapons against the dreadnoughts. Those heavy ships, their heavy armor, cannons do 20%, where everything else does 10%. So they do double damage. However, their accuracy is so bad, they're missing a little bit of that, so they're not really doing double damage um but pretty close to it still they, they do double damage when they hit but they they're gonna miss a little bit of the time like 20 percent of the time so that double damage is actually only come up to 80 times two let's say 160 you're doing 160 percent damage with cannons than the other weapons but if you throw in a whole bunch of evasion on there it's going to make a significant difference against those cannons. If they're already only hitting 80% of the time, and you can throw up something crazy like 100% evasion almost, um, they're not hitting, <laughs> you know? So unless he's got a lot of accuracy buffs, he's not hitting with those cannons. Um, and that's if you can get up to 100% evasion. I, again, I don't know how high it gets. I've not been able to test with it. But you, you can get the point that I'm getting at. Even if you only got up to, say, 80% evasion, if he doesn't have anything buffing it, he's missing with those cannons. So instead of doing 160% damage, he's doing practically zero. Or even if you reduced it by, say, 50 points. 50 points against the drones, you know, you're going to avoid 30% of it. Uh, 50 points against the missiles, if he's got fully upgraded, it's not going to avoid at all. But that 50% against the cannons, he's only now hitting you about 30% of the time. And, yeah, you know, well, that he's doing 60% damage of the other weapons. So, I mean, beams are already screwed. If you can screw over cannons, that's two out of four weapons. And the other two weapons only do 10% damage. So, evasive is really good against cannons and beams. Uh... Half the weapons, it's really good against. And the other two are mediocre at best. So it's really, really good to go for evasive. The other option, like I said, was armor. Armor, you don't have to worry about power. Um, and armor will be better against, potentially, the missiles. Uh, and the evasive can help against the drones a little bit. The armor... Could help against the drones a little bit. And probably even help against the drones a little bit more. Um, so it's... It's really difficult to figure out which way to go. I highly suggest if you're going to do... Multiple armies of dreadnoughts. Just have some go for defense on evasion. And some go for defense on armor. That way you have a variety. You have, you know, multiple. Um, if one fails... Maybe the other one will be super effective. So if he gets through one Dreadnought army, that's really, say, evasive, which screws over all of his cannons. And then you come in with the heavily armored one. Or vice versa, maybe you've got the heavily armored one, and only the ones with cannons can actually deal with it. Then you come in with the heavily evasive one, and only the ones without cannons will be able to deal with it. I mean, it's... You know, one of these armies has got to work. So... That would be the way to go with all of your Dreadnought defenses. Either all armor or all evasive. Um, or, you know, basically, mostly anyway. You could even do a combination, honestly. I, uh... But yeah, you don't need to go heavy into like all health. And you definitely don't want to move towards shields. Shields are the last thing you want to be putting on a Dreadnought. Um... 
yeah, that pretty well covered it, I think. So this video has gone on long enough. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Um, hopefully I'll find out more and let you guys know, and peace out.